Station, which is by uh, Artemy Kotov, correct? Right, and Anna Zinina and Ludmilo Zavilban, my colleagues. I will try to demonstrate my screen. Yeah, we can see it. So it should be like that. Oh, you can. Well, I, 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 I think that Joao needs to to uh, close his uh, screen because we are still seeing a Joao. Yeah, I found. It. No, we only see your desktop uh, wallpaper. Okay. Uh, option. Okay. Is yeah. it like that? Yeah, that's good. So you yeah. have you have my presentation, my screen. Okay. Uh, we look at different existing robots uh, like this on the screen. So these are uh, market robots, pre-market robots, or research robots. Uh, and what we do, we make our own robot, which is called F two. Uh, it is like that. It is quite simple from the point of view of construction, uh, but uh, we try to design it um, uh, so that it can be very expressive. Uh, so uh, Antonio Lieta uh, today uh, has departed from Marvin Minsky, and, and we also use a concept by Marvin Minsky, a concept of proto-specialists like uh, uh, small and specific units uh, which detect different situations and start uh, some pieces of behavior. And according to Minsky, these units uh, compete uh, to form the behavior of the agent. Uh, so this can be a basis of an emotional computer agent, agent or an emotional robot and um, different proto-specialists proto are responsible for different motions or drives. So we use this concept to design the software for our robot. And indeed, we have uh, uh, different proto-specialists, or uh, how we call them, scripts. Uh, so And scripts have if conditions or premises. And for each input, we compare it to the premises of uh, scripts. We may start the script, and the script can start some piece of behavior, which can be uh, described on behavior markup language. It's an international project to uh, define the language which describes the behavior of computer agents, robots, and so on. So uh, this uh, BMA, uh, according to the creators, uh, should be executed on different robots. Uh, so regardless of the um, physical construction of the robot, it should process BMA. Uh, so we operate uh, F2 robot uh, with the help of this BMA, but in general we can uh, we can start that on any robot which supports the, this language. Uh, so we have a, a compound speech processor for the robot, and for um, input sentences like here, scientists are interested in the consciousness. Uh, we construct syntactic trees. Uh, an example is on the left with blue uh, lines. Uh, so we have predicate here, we have agent, and we have patient, uh, like consciousness. Uh, from this tree, we design semantics of the sentence, which is in the center, green. Uh, so and in, in this semantics, we have a predicate, be interested, which is encoded as a list of semantic markers. Like uh, this is some action, assertive action, which takes uh, place at the present time. It is something like to think, it is something like to pay attention. It is something like uh, being engaged in something. Uh, so uh, these are scientists. Uh, um, scientists it's, is somebody called after his profession, uh, profession in science, something like a phys physici physicist. And uh, they are interested in the consciousness. And consciousness is something like a container, abstract container, and some part of uh, psychology of a person. Uh, so we constructed semi this semantic representation, compare that to the scripts, and if some script is triggered by this representation, this script can send BML to the robot. And in the same way, we represent other events which may come from a visual processing system. So for the visual processing system, we have a vi video aggregator uh, which operates on visual events, and it recognizes different moves in Tangram uh, game. So you assemble 
uh, some puzzle. You solve a puzzle and the solution is uh, you have to compose some figure out of uh, game pieces and the robot can monitor this process and react to your uh, actions positively or negatively. And in this experiment, we track the face uh, of the person and we track the rotation of the face and we try to detect the situation where your uh, face um, is rotated to the robot. So it is roughly like you uh, pay attention pay attention, or look at this robot. So if we tell some phrase to the robot, uh, it gets some semantic representation. Like people think about robots, so you have predicate with markers, agent with markers, patient with markers. But if you, if you have a visual event, you also get um, semantic representations. Like person looks at me. So there is a predicate, looks at, there is an agent like a person, and there is a patient like egocentric, that's, that's me, meaning me, robot. Uh, and in the same way, if a person moves some game element correctly or incorrectly, we have events like moves correctly, person, game element, game element number seven, which can be the square. And all these um, semantic uh, representations arrive at the input of scripts and we choose the best script to process each representation. So in this architecture, uh, we use uh, scripts like proto-specialists, but we can process events of any type, like visual events or uh, phrases, semantic representation of any phrase, and so on. And if the script is triggered, it can send BML or many BMLs to the robot. Uh, so, as I said, we track faces and we send events like person looks at me or looks away or looks at, at some other person and we track uh, game situations and we receive events like uh, person moves game element correctly or incorrectly. Uh, to, um, to monitor uh, the reactions and to, uh, to simulate the reactions, we also use uh, a model of changing activation, uh, like many models represented uh, in the reports before us. Uh, we use uh, the model of by Conrad Lorenz, uh, which applies to uh, basic instincts. And in this model, you have a stimulus and we have, you have internal tension. And if the tension is higher, you react um, to each stimulus in a more uh, aggressive way. Uh, so, uh, in our situation, so called microstates control internal tension and scripts are activated to different degrees uh, depending on the similarity between input stimulus and the premise of scripts and proportionally to the activation of the corresponding microstate. So, if a script is activated, it starts uh, sending BMLs to the robot and if the BML is executed, the script discharges and also uh, it discharges the microstate. So different scripts may compete in this process. And in this experiment, we applied this model to the uh, simulation of gaze and the understanding of social gaze. Uh, our hypothesis is that the robot is perceived as more attractive if, if it reacts uh, to the user's gaze. Uh, and maybe there is some dependency between the level of emotional intelligence at the person and uh, the perception of the social gaze of the robot. Uh, there are 46 people who participated in this study. Uh, they had to tell a story to a robot and they also had to evaluate the robots uh, on semantic differential scores and also pass an emotional intelligence test. Uh, for the stimulus, we gave them stories by Karol Bidstrup uh, so these are uh, cartoons like that, uh, but they were separated into separate cards. So each person had to compose a story and tell the story to the robot. Uh, we had two robots at the table marked with triangle and square, and they reacted in different ways. So if you turned your head to the triangle robot, it looks aside. Uh, if you turned your head to the square robot, it looks back. So it looks like that. Uh, we have a stack of cards which you can arrange in different order, design the story, and then tell the story to one of the two robots. Hello, would you like to listen to my story about this poor woman? Hello, maybe you would like to listen to my story. So you have noticed that they react in different ways. 
And uh, from the first person perspective, it looks like that. So it looks back, and this robot looks aside, left or right in random order. So it's like that. Uh, so this is an actual uh, footage uh, where a person uh, tells a story. Uh, so this is a participant uh, who was telling a story uh, while interacting with the robots. Uh, this robot was looking aside. And this robot was looking back, raising his head. Uh, so then we asked the person to prefer left or right robot, uh, meaning uh, triangle or square robot. Uh, we found that uh, 26 people preferred triangle robot, 28% uh, of people preferred square robot, and 46% told that uh, uh, robots were e equally attractive or equally non-attractive. Uh, and we found that if a person prefers a specific robot, left or right, uh, the person evaluates this particular robot as uh, funny, fast, emotional, attentive, responsive, friendly, and attractive. Mm, so uh, emotionally, uh, but not as competent or intelligent, uh, not, uh, not on intelligent scales, but on emotional scales. So this can, this can correspond to the left robot, right robot, uh, never mind. Uh, but so we have fans of the triangle robot, fans of the square robot, uh, which is responding by looking back. Uh, and we also asked them, did you notice the difference between the two robots? Uh, so they had to describe difference and we found that uh, only 8% in the group uh, who have preferred the triangle robot Notice the difference with gaze direction. Mm, but 69% uh, of the group who have preferred the square robot have noticed the difference. They told, yes, the square robot was looking, looking back and the triangle robot was looking sideways. Uh, so we see that uh, the group, uh, the fans of the square robots are more competent uh, in the detection of the difference, gaze difference. Uh, and also, uh, they have passed a, a psychological test uh, for emotional intelligence. Uh, and uh, here on this graph, you can see that on the left, there is group um, who have preferred the gaze avoiding robot, the robot were, uh, which was looking left or right. And they have a lower degree of emotional intelligence on the very specific scale, understanding of emotions of others. Uh, so, if you have a lower degree on this test, uh, you are not very much sensitive to the mm, gaze direction of the robot. Uh, but if you have a higher degree uh, on this scale of the emotional test, mm, then it is likely that you prefer a gaze-responsive robot. So, uh, people who have, who have preferred the gaze-responsive robot have a higher degree uh, on this uh, emotional test. So this is interesting for us uh, because uh, it says that, uh, well, people can prefer uh, any kind of robot and people with high emotional intelligence are sensitive to the gaze uh, and uh, other people are, are not, uh, but still other people treat their favorite robot as more um, attractive on emotional scales. Uh, what is important for us is, uh, are not only the results of this particular experiment, but uh, that we have applied uh, a general architecture of scripts uh, to uh, process uh, such compound reactions uh, as reactions of the robot to human gazes. Uh, in this experiment, we used uh, two particular scripts, a script which is sensitive to mm, direct uh, contact and script uh, which is sensitive to uh, moving aside from the robot. So uh, they competed each time and they control the gaze of the robot. Uh, but also in this architecture, we can start simultaneously other scripts, they can be activated. So you can tell something to the robot, uh, you can play the game with the robot, uh, you can ask questions. Uh, uh, and um, uh, these input events can trigger different scripts uh, and the robot should, shall balance its behavior uh, depending on the internal tension. So 
which script is uh, the more important, like uh, which script uh, has a high degree of sensitivity. Uh, in this case, you can achieve the balance, uh, internal balance of the robots, uh, like it was suggested in the concept of proto-specialist. So in this architecture, there is a competition between scripts uh, and the simulation of arousal and the release of this arousal. Uh, when the robot looks at the person, uh, the corresponding script released. Uh, in this architecture, we can process gaze, uh, but also we can process uh, special puzzles uh, like tangram video events, uh, and also uh, we can establish text processing in the same way. Uh, and also through this architecture, we generate BMAs, uh, and potentially we can control different robots which support the execution of BMAs. Thank you. Great to give this presentation at this conference. Thank you, uh, Artemi. Does anybody have questions? I, I have a question. <laughs> uh, Artemi, uh, I was wondering that in, 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 in your both tests, uh, in some sense, the robot is reacting to, to the eye of, of the interlocutor. Uh, I was wondering if you have a third kind of, of situation where the robot will move randomly, for example, not a divergent or convergent uh, 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 movement, but randomly, just like the robot's not paying attention to you. Because in some sense, uh, to, to look to the side uh, uh, gives me, at least for me, the impression that the robot is paying attention to you, but doesn't want to show that, okay? And when the robot looks at you, uh, the, the, the robot uh, uh, wants to, uh, is also paying attention and wants to show that it's paying attention. But uh, if it's looking randomly, uh, it will give the impression that the robot is not paying attention at all to, to, to you. And so maybe this could gi give a different kind of, different kind of, of uh, comments from, from people on, on the kind of contact that they can feel uh, with, with the robot. It's, it's just a, a suggestion. Great. Uh, generally, robots always do that. Uh, so we have a generator of, uh, uh, of movements, uh, some minor movements, uh, but this generator uh, has a lower, lower activation. So uh, if there is a, uh, an input event uh, with a higher important, importance, like incoming question or incoming gaze, uh, so uh, these movements are suppressed. In this particular experiment, we use these uh, minor movements for hands and uh, head and eyes of the robots were controlled by this gaze screen. So we have a combination in this case. Uh, but, but generally, yes, so, so we have different levels of, uh, of the importance of stimuli and robots have to process all of, them, all of that. If there are no stimuli, then the robot uh, should move, yes, indeed, they, they look uh, left or right, something like that. And this is also important what you have said, because uh, we have people uh, with high emotional intelligence who told us, all right, the left triangle robot was listening to me. He was reacting because he was, he was moving when I look at him, uh, but he was looking sideways. It means he was not very much interested in my story. And uh, I was eager to uh, tell this story uh, with a greater interest. I, I was eager to engage this robot by my story. Uh, or some people told, okay, okay, that's a girl. Mm, I tell her something. Uh, and she starts thinking about that. That's why she looks aside, uh, meaning, meaning the robot is, is thinking about what I've said, like a girl. So that, that was interesting. Or, or, or maybe the, the robot is shy. He, he is uh, shy of, of talking to you and trying to, to look around to, to, because he wants, doesn't want to engage in a conversation. So this could be a, 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 an example of a shy robot. At <laughs> least to me, it's, it, like, it sounds to me. Indeed, that's, that's interesting because we had different participants. Some of them told the robot is shy. Some of them told, okay, the robot is uh, thinking about uh, his, his own matters, his own ideas. Uh, some people told, all right, this robot uh, who was looking uh, up at me and down is, um, is a bit sad. Uh, 
because it was moving his head down. So they have some of them have paid attention not by the upper movement, like the robot looking up, uh, but they have paid attention at the movement down. So they noticed that the robot sometimes was looking down at the table. Uh, that was a, that was also interesting. So we see that different people pay attention at different aspects of this behavior. But in this experiment, we wanted to, um, as always, we wanted to uh, examine some general tendency. So the general tendency is like that. And that's interesting that different people have different observ observations. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Artemy, I, I would like to uh, say a few words uh, first. Uh, I see some uh, similarity in what you are doing and what I am trying to do. And uh, the, the, the approaches and the goals are different, but still we, we have a lot in common, I think. But uh, despite that, this is a very hot topic and uh, very promising and very demanded. Uh, there are such modest results. You are looking at some minor details and maybe not the most important things. So you, you work on this project for many years and uh, what is the achievement? I mean, I could ask this question myself and it's a shame that um, none of us actually did a breakthrough. So uh, I, I believe that you and I need to get together. Either you come to me or I come to you. And yeah, we decide uh, how to proceed. And uh, we discuss what we are doing and maybe we uh, try to develop uh, some winning strategy, some roadmap and uh, understand what... Uh, what problems need to be solved because I see just listening uh, your talk I was just looking at myself uh, from uh, the eyes of somebody else and uh, I, I see that something is wrong something is wrong because there are so modest achievements so far and you you are happy with uh, discovering some minor uh, differences at the age of statistical significance in in the question that is not really important and maybe not the main question in this area. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't yeah. want to... Thanks a lot. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, ha I have to, to have an opportunity to answer, right? Yeah, yeah. Because it is a discussion. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot uh, for, the, for this comment. Uh, generally, we are happy about our progress this year because uh, during this, this year we have implemented on this robot uh, um, recognition of game pieces and game situations, uh, recognition of gaze in the form of head rotation. Uh, we have started this architecture where we can make all that simultaneously. Uh, we have started the, the question answering uh, so the robot can read the text and then you can ask a question uh, and the robot retrieves uh, the, the best answer in his memory, uh, in his semantic memory. Uh, so, and you can uh, make all that with the robot simultaneously in this architecture. Uh, of course, in this talk, uh, we speak about some, some narrow experiment uh, where we study a gaze, which uh, according to my point of view, it's quite important because um, the gaze behavior uh, gives, um, gives intuitive impression about the person and about the robot. Uh, so this is what, what people always test. When they come to the robot, uh, they say hello, they make this way, they can touch the robot. So, so they test if the robot can respond with a gaze, if the robot can respond with speech, if the robot can respond to... Uh, to touch, uh, so these are these are very important tests for cognitive abilities. So the first test that a uh, person makes in order to understand if the robot is um, adequate. Yeah, I, so I we are happy, we are happy with this project, and we we will be happy to cooperate. This is what science is made of. Uh, yes, and there, there was, by the way, a lot of uh, studies of case in people in in psychology. Right, not related to robots, so the, the, there must be some knowledge already available in, in this domain. But uh, anyway, 